Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're well. And today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'll be editing a cityscape. And I'll be using some of the ideas and sharing some of the tips and stuff that I talk about in the new cityscape power pack bundle that I announced in my last video. You can check that bundle out on my website at the link below. It includes a 60 page ebook all about shooting cities, how to capture them, what to shoot and how to plan all that. A 14 page HDR guide, four different preset packs and more. It's pretty extensive and I've had a lot of great feedback on it. So thank you to those of you that have already jumped on that offer. It is a limited time for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Check it out at the link below. But I'm going to walk through a cityscape edit here in Luminar and show off some of the ideas and talk about some of the things that I also cover in much more depth in that bundle. So I have this photo here which started life like that. And so far I have used Develop Raw and I also removed a couple of spots. And that's the thing, uh, first thing I wanna talk about is as far as my workflow goes, and I outline, outline my workflow in a about three and a half, four page document that's included in that bundle. But in my workflow, I start with Develop Raw every time. It's the best way to get started. And then after that, I jump into Super Contrast because it gives you the ability to really control the light so well. And so what I'm gonna do is just kind of move uh, a few of these things around here and get the light looking the way I want it to look. Now, the nice thing about this tool is that it separates the uh, different tonal areas. So you're impacting the different tonal areas, but overall you're having like a global impact on the light and the contrast in the image. So there it is before, and there it is now. Slightly different, not massively, but it has a nice impact. And I think of that as kind of my one, two punch when I'm editing. Now, with the recent addition of light depth, that has quickly moved up to be a key tool for me, and I use it extensively in my editing now. And it's effectively tool number three for me. I still like to go develop raw super contrast, but tool number three is light depth because of all the capability that it provides. It's really good at accentuating the light and moving that light through the photo to create more depth, right? Um, and that's really what this is about. So. Uh, in this photo, what I want to do is get a little bit more light on those buildings. You can see kind of how it's uh, in those buildings, kind of a little bit further down the street. So I'm going to uh, increase that a little bit, maybe add a little bit of softness, which is kind of blending those edges together. But the other thing that's really cool about it is I can add some warmth, and I do want to add some warmth to those buildings. And so I'm brightening them and adding a little bit of warmth, so it's a great way to really control the overall look of the image. But I'm not done. I'm going to go down here to Advanced Settings as well. And I like the negative 50. I actually might go a little bit darker for that brightness near, but I also want to cool it off a little bit. And one of the things that I talk about and love to do in editing is play the color differences, the warm and the cool off of each other. There's a natural uh, complement, if you will, between the warm and the cool, right? The yellows and the blues complement each other. And I'm going to play off that in this edit to some degree. But I'm also going to show you something that I really like to do as well with color. Uh, uh, for the far, I'm actually going to cool it off a little bit as well. And so, you know, it's going to be something about like that. And so if you look at light depth and what it's done to the photo, there it is before, where the light's a bit more flat. Even though I applied contrast adjustments in Develop Raw, and super contrast with light depth, it was still a little bit flat compared to now where that light is really popping in the middle of the photo because of where I placed it with light depth. It's also warmer and hey, guess what? There's street lights there, which I use as a leading line. Talk about that in uh, the ebook in the bundle. But if you look at that, that light depth is really just, it's just uh, taking the photo, I think, to the next level. So I think that's fantastic. Now in cities, a tool that I love to use is Structure AI. And I'm going to do about a 30 here, which is approaching kind of high, but it's not too high. And in a photo like this, I'm actually going to apply it across the entire image. I'm a huge fan of masking. And again, I talk about that in my workflow document, but it gives a little bit of structure, a little bit of texture to this guy. So before and after, and I think it looks fine. So I feel like I can get away with it without masking Although I do recommend you learn how to mask if you haven't yet and, and use them, frankly, extensively in your editing. And having said that, the same thing applies for Accent AI. I always mask it except in this photo. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and use Sky Enhancer a little bit and Accent AI across the entire photo without any mask, which is contrary to my normal advice. But that's why uh, another thing I talk about on the bundle, my advice is, you know, based on the photo and so things change. Uh, editing is a fluid art, it's not a science. And so 
I say things and they generally work well as a rule of thumb. And sometimes it's okay. You break your own rules, which is what I'm doing in this video. Before and after, I think we're getting there. We've got a nice look. But now, after I've done uh, a bunch of light and some detail work, I want to get into color. And this is where I'm going to make a really big shift in this photo. Okay, generally speaking, I avoid the saturation slider here in color. I also avoid it in Develop Raw. But I am going to give a tiny bit of vibrance. I love the colors in this photo and the blues and the yellows, but I want to shift them a little bit, which HSL is so good at. And really, I'm going to focus most of my effort here in HSL because that's where you can have a huge impact on colors. And that's something I like to point out with Cityscape photos. You can shift colors around and get away with it a bit more than you can in a landscape and certainly more than in a portrait and things like that because uh, people don't really know unless they've been there or are standing there with you what the colors really look like and so this is where the artistry of uh, editing cityscapes comes into play and so what i want to do is i'm going to take the hue of the orange and i'm going to do like a negative 30 or so these numbers are frankly immaterial because every photo is going to be different but what i'm doing is kind of shifting these kind of yellow tones to make them a bit more orange. I pull the green down, but there's not a lot of green in this photo. But the green that I am seeing, I'm bringing a little bit more to the yellow. So if you look at the before and the after, it's really noticeable in the street lights. It gives them a bit more of an orange glow. I like that a lot. I think it looks really nice. But I'm not done, of course. I'm going to go play with a few things, including saturation. So I'm going to take the reds up a little bit. I'm going to take the oranges up a little bit. And I'm going to take the yellows up a little bit as well. So getting a little bit more punch in those colors. Uh, but the greens, I'm going to bring them way down uh, because I don't really want a lot of green in this photo. There's not that much, but there's a little bit over here. And I just really want to focus on the, the warm and cool and the interplay of those colors. Uh, but I am going to take the blue saturation down a bit. And, and that's a pretty significant color in this photo, but it was a bit too blue. So if you look at the before, the blue in the sky, it's just not really that realistic. So you could go a little bit tamer than I did, but I'm stripping it away for a very specific reason. If you look at the before and the after, I'm really playing up those warm tones and creating a little bit more of a uh, urban kind of feel to this photo, which some of the presets in that bundle uh, do provide for you automatically. In fact, a lot of the tools and this photo uh, I actually used a preset on. I'm kind of breaking some of the preset down in this edit for you. Uh, for luminance, what I want to do is I want the reds and the oranges and the yellows to be a little bit brighter. So I'm bringing those up a little bit. Uh, green, I'm going to take that down just because, just in case. It's, again, not much. It's a little bit over there. But sometimes you find in some of the yellows that there's a little bit of green too. But what I really want to do is bring the rest of these down, like a negative 50 or so. Now, there's not really a lot of purple or magenta in this photo. But there's a lot of blue, and bringing that uh, luminance of the blue down, you can see the blue a lot better, but it's darker. So I'm creating a little bit more drama, but uh, obviously a little bit more contrast as well. So before, much more blue, much more yellow. Almost feels like a spring day. Like, oh, look, it's beautiful colors. Now, a little bit more moody, a little bit more like a fall day, if that makes sense. Bottom line is I'm shifting the mood of the photo by adjusting the colors, the luminance, the saturation, and of course the hue to really create a kind of an urban, kind of a met metropolitan feel that's got a little bit of punch to it. So that's something that you can do by using color, and I love to do it, especially in cityscapes. It's just so much fun. Now, after I've done a lot of my color moves, I start to get into my kind of wrapping it up type moves. Mystical is one that I use a lot. I'm going to do about a 25 here. It kind of softens things up, adds a little bit of contrast, creates a little bit more mood. And in adding contrast, if you look at um, the, the darker parts, of course, they're getting darker. So it's creating a little bit more push-pull between like what's happening with these lights, my leading line into the photo with that steeple at the end, as well as the, the bright uh, spots around them. So that's kind of kicking that up a little bit. And I'm going into landscape, and I'm doing a little bit here with Golden Hour. So maybe like a 15 or so. Golden Hour is great at popping those warm tones and making them jump out a little bit more, which it does a great job of here. But I'm also going to use Dehaze, and that kind of cuts through some of this cloudiness and creates a little bit more drama and intensity. So before and after, it's dark in that sky a little bit, which is another reason I pulled back some of the blue, because if you don't decrease the saturation of that blue and then you hit it with Dehaze, the, and, and more contrast, which is what I also did with Mystical, the blues start to get really intense. And I want to control that because I don't want it to be like a, a neon mess of blue. I want to have an impactful photo. 
and uh, a dramatic photo, but not an over-the-top color photo. So before and after slight change there using landscape. And the last thing I'm going to do is just wrap this up with a vignette. And this is just a personal preference, but I'm in kind of the wrap it up mode. And I like to use feathering on my vignettes and a little bit of inner light. Uh, and there you go. The vignette really just kind of uh, helps wrap that up. So before and after. And that, my friends, is the entire edit. If you look at the before photo, very, uh, you know, I like the photo. I think it's 10 or 15 seconds. Um, there was no one there. These were the streets of Prague at like five in the morning. Something I talk about in the ebook is getting up and shooting at blue hour in the morning before anybody's out. You get what would be an incredibly crowded street, even at sunset and into the evening. I had it to myself, my friends. Uh, but after some edits, playing up that drama, you can make an incredibly impactful cityscape image with some of these key moves that I talk about in my bundle and my ebook. The presets help do this. Check that out at the link below. Thanks for hanging out and checking this out. I hope it's giving you some ideas. Even if you don't get my bundle, check out the uh, the tips in this video. They will improve your cityscape photos. And you'll be able to take a kind of blue, kind of, you know, it's a nice shot, I think, and turn it into something with a bit more drama, a bit more oomph, a bit more punch, and a bit more impact. Just like that. Quick and easy in Luminar. That's how I do it. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys have a great day. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. And until then, adios.